Greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from just outside the recycling facility in this Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast series. In the previous episode, we were using diamond transport pipes to optimize our recycling facility. And in this episode, we are going to continue to pimp out this bad boy using various methods. Number one, we are going to create an automatic dispensing unit that will automatically open up our scrap boxes um, from this dispenser over here. Number two, we are going to increase the speed of our recyclers by adding overclocker units directly into them. And number three, we are going to um, optimize our quarry transport system to ensure that all raw ore materials go straight to the macerator for macerating so that we can turn them into uh, dust and double up on the amount of ores that we get out of the quarry. Guys, this is going to be an action-packed freaking episode, so I hope you got your popcorn. I hope you got your chips and your biscuits and your soda. Get ready, guys, to feed the beast that is your freaking mind with me, Ren Diggity Dog. Well guys, firstly, before we get to any of the jazz we want to do today, I want to show you some of the improvements that I've made around the Cyber Labs since I last saw you guys. Firstly, what I've done is I've actually fixed up um, the piping network over here. Instead of having two diamond transport pipes at the end here, I've just got one. And what we're going to do is ensure that the black pipe, the blue pipe, and eventually the white pipe, which will be at the top, um, is going to be sending items to the back into the recycling facility, and that the red pipe is going to be sending scrap back into the automat uh, into the auto crafting tables over there. Now we didn't actually need two transport pipes because I've got an iron transport pipe down there that just directs um, items from the black pipe into this line which goes straight back into the recycling facility and then I've added a, a secondary line over here so now if we open up this diamond pipe we can see that we can now use the blue line as well as the black line to send items back into the recycling and that means we've got more space for more items so up here you can see some of the craftable items and down here some of the more useless items and of course we've got uh, doubles here so we can just add more as they come in as uh, items come in that we don't want anymore we can just add them to the black and the blue lines and we can add another line up here in case we need even more lineage to get rid of that jazz that we don't actually need. So this diamond pipe is now optimized, which is fan freaking fantastic. And as we saw in the previous episode, it runs underground and runs all the way along here back into the, uh, the initial pipe that takes items into the recycling facility. And I've also optimized it more by making the pipe go directly into this diamond pipe instead of into this diamond pipe. Now this diamond pipe is completely optimized to send all cobblestone to the red and everything else will go into the yellow and the yellow of course takes the items into the recycling facility. So that is now beautifully covered up, looking good and I am very happy with that. Um, what I've also done is, uh, is neatened up the wiring slightly. I've run the wiring underground instead of along the roof and I think it just looks a, a lot better. Um, it's resulted in us having to use way more um, glass fiber cables, but I'm hoping that we're going to be able to stock, on di stock up on diamonds really soon um, as we're getting into some more advanced machinery and whatnot in this series. And of course, I've got the pipes running underground here within the recycling facility itself too. So that is all looking much neater, I think. I, I really like the way that this has looked. And I've also had to disconnect a couple of the squidwoods so that I can reconnect the macerator. What we're going to be doing in this episode is making sure that iron uh, any ores that come along this pipe from the quarry are going to go directly up this chute over here and directly into the hoppers that are sitting on top of the macerator and that will mean that any ore that comes out of the quarry will be automatically macerated and won't make its way over to the storage room or to the warehouse over there so guys we have got a, a ton of stuff to do today so what i want to do is just get our quarry fired up and blazing let's make sure that our engines are turned on in the recycling maintenance room so um, now our quarry should have started right away yes we can see some items have joined us and uh, what we're going to work on first and foremost guys is a way to automate this dispenser we don't want to always be coming back here to automatically press a button over here to make this dispenser work um, we want it to happen automatically and thanks to your guys really excellent suggestions um, in the comment section of the previous video I think I have found the, me the method that I want to use to automate this dispenser. Now what I'm doing here is just getting rid of some uh, some of the stuff that's in this chest um, so to give uh, give ourselves a little bit more space when eventually we automate that bad boy. So let's get our buttholes back up into the warehouse over here and let's drop off some of these items in here. Now before we even get to that guys I'm sure loads of you are, are really interested to see what we've been able to gather so far 
as you can see, we have got a butt ton of stuff up in here, guys. Absolutely amazing. Um, what I've done over here is has started to create the skeleton of what our sorting room is going to look like. And I'm not going to give anything away. You guys are going to have to wait for the sorting room episode. But trust me, guys, i got something sweet planned, man. It is going to be awesome. And I spotted something really freaking awesome in one of these chests over here. Check it out, guys. Look at all of this stuff. But have a look at this. Iridium ore. Now, I don't know what Iridium ore is, but it's, the writing is blue, which tells me that it's either really rare or uh, really powerful. So, already our quarry has been able to suck up some Iridium ore, which is absolutely awesome. And we've even got a rocky princess in here from somewhere. And um, I assume that's when the, the, the quarry sucks up a beehive, but that's pretty awesome. And um, look at all of this jazz that we've got in here, guys. I mean, lead, dust, we've got rubber even. I mean, we've got a ridiculous amount of jazz in here from the quarry already and from our piping system. So freaking freaking awesome. Um, ooh, I've got a little bit of blue dust in here, lazarite dust. Um, and I mean, just look how much power this is saving us, you know. We would have had to have macerated all of this to get all of this dust. And um, it's the, the, the recycling facility is what's creating this dust for us. And that is just so freaking sweet, I cannot even begin to explain to you guys. No, sorry, just adjusting my mic over here. It's uh, in the wrong position. Let's get our buttholes over to the um, project table in the machine room. And guys, everything that we need for today's episode is in here. But before we even begin, let's get a tater in the belly. Mm. So um, as you can see, our macerator is macerating away. Its hoppers are kind of full. And at the end of this episode, it's going to be completely connected up to the quarry system. So that is going to be wicked sweet. And uh, But before we even get to that, guys, what are we doing today? Well, first and foremost, let's work on the automatic timing system of our dispenser. Now, you guys have told me exactly how to do this. I'm going to be following you guys. And if you guys are wrong, I'm going to be angry. But I'm hoping that you guys are right. So the first thing we need to create is a timer. And to make a timer, we need these things called stone wafers. As you can see, it looks like a pretty complicated recipe, but if you go deeper into these things, you can see that it's really, really basic. And the base um, requirement for most of these things, the stone anode, the stone wire, the stone pointer, the stone cathode, is stone wafers. Now, how in the jazz do we get stone wafers? Well, it couldn't be easier. All we've got to do is put some stone into a furnace, can be any furnace, I think and it will turn it into stone wafers. So let's get a couple of uh, bits of stone in the furnace rooms firing away. Eventually these stone wafers will find them, will make their way over into the warehouse and we'll be able to go collect them to create our timer. Now what the timer does is every few seconds or so, you can set the amount of time I do believe, but every few seconds or so it generates a redstone pulse. And that is that redstone pulse is what our dispenser needs to, to fire once. And of course, when the dispenser fires, it opens a scrap box. So what we've got to do is find a way to convert that redstone pulse into something that is going to um, activate the dispenser. And as we know from a Minecraft vanilla, the way you can activate a dispenser, one of the ways, you can activate it as a dispenser is by using a redstone repeater. So that's what we're going to be using to um, to get the redstone pulse into the dispenser and get our recycling plant absolutely firing uh, at full blast. Now, at the moment, the recycling units themselves, the recyclers, are just not running fast enough. So we're not going to be able to send enough scrap into the dispenser to have a constant stream of um, randomly generated items. So we're going to have to find a way to increase the speed of our recyclers and of course the way that you do that guys is with overclockers and maybe some of you guys who have computers and you know have really fast computers and you overclock your computers it's exactly the same principle we're going to be using a computer chip essentially to um, increase the speed of our recyclers at the cost of more energy but we've got six squidwoods so we are not worried about freaking energy man <laughs> Um, but first and foremost, guys, let's craft this timer. So it's pretty easy to make, right? We need a couple of stone wafers, which we've already got. We need three of these stone wires. We need two of these stone anodes. We need a stone cathode and a stone pointer. So why don't we start with a stone wire? Well, that could not be easier um, if, if it tried. I mean, all we need is a wafer and a little bit of redstone, and that is going to create for us a stone wire. So we need three of those bad boys. Next up, we need this stone ano anode. And that, again, is a very simple recipe. Just some stone wafers that we just got from smelting down some stone in a furnace. And there, oh, look at that, man. We even get three of them just from crafting one. So we'll get that. Now what we need is the stone cathode, stone wafer, and a uh, redstone torch. So that is simple. Let's get that out of the way. 
and a redstone torch up in that jazz stone cathode and finally oops oh just make another one for good measure <laughs> finally the stone pointer all we need is the same as the stone cathode it seems plus a stone on top so all we'll do is add another stone on top here and we've got our stone pointer sweet right now we just got to put it all together it looks a little something like this let's see if we can remember how it goes so wafers wires pointer in the middle cathode on the bottom and um anodes on the side and that creates for us a timer Bam! in the belly right so that's the first part of our automatic dispenser unit the next part is going to be a redstone repeater and for those of you guys who play vanilla minecraft you will be familiar with this recipe just three stone a couple of redstone torches and a little bit of redstone itself so there is the three stone, there's the redstone torch, and there is... Oh, it's the other way around, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> the redstone torch, just like that. So now we've got our repeater, and we are now ready to automate our dispenser, guys. So let's get our butts back down to the recycling facility, and um, it should be working away nicely. A little bit slowly, but working away nicely nonetheless. There you can see the scrap coming through. Um, and now we're going to be able to automate our dispenser. This is going to be freaking sweet. So what we're going to need to do, guys, is add a couple of platforms here to hold our new, um, our new blocks. And the first thing that we're going to install is the redstone repeater. Now, we need to get some sort of a signal going into this repeater. And that is going to be done via the timer. Now you can see when the um, needle hits this little thing, it creates a redstone pulse. Now, why isn't this working? It, because the redstone pulse is just not lasting long enough for the dispenser to actually fire. So all we got to do is just set the repeater back a couple times. And now what we'll see is the redstone signal lasts long enough for the dispenser to automatically fire away. And now this dispenser is just going to go crazy and um, dispense, you know, without without us having to do it manually so i mean if that is not sweet i don't know what is and uh as you can see it's just creating scrap at the moment i could sit here and watch this all day man it's just so freaking awesome but now our recycling facility is 100 percent automated people this is absolutely epic you can see we've got machine parts olivine i don't even know what olivine is but that sounds pretty damn awesome eight single-use batteries I mean, we've got a tin can filled with something. We've even got leather up in this jazz, man. This is, this is awesome. I am loving this facility. And as you can see, this is firing away um, at a rapid pace. So we're just going to leave it be. And uh, we'll come back a little bit later and check what we have managed to get in the chest. Hopefully a diamond. That would be sweet. Right, let's quickly pop into the recycling facility itself. Now, what you can see, you can actually see pieces of meat in there and different things. And those are the bits of stuff being returned into the recycler from the dispenser unit over there. So our system is actually working perfectly. But what isn't working is um, the fact that these, these recycler units are just not recycling fast enough. As you can see, um, the time that they take to recycle is really slow. And this stack of cobblestone is being constantly filled up. So it's going to take forever for us to clear the infinite loop pipe. So I think what we're going to do is just power down the quarry ever so slightly, just so that we don't send that much material into the recycling facility. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, this is going to going to start to dry up a little bit but once we get our overclocker chips into the recyclers it should start running a lot faster um, which is sweet now one last thing i wanted to show you guys was this manual um tool that i've made over here this machine over here and what this does is allows me to manually input cobblestone into the recycling um into the transport network to take it into the recycling facility because what i was finding is that if, if i was putting cobblestone in here it was bypassing the um, automatic crafting table and wasn't being turned into slabbage and of course that would that was just a waste so this allows me to get um, any excess cobblestone i have in my bedroom in rent town for example turned into cobblestone without having to find another way to, to get it in and of course we will have some sort of a manual entry uh, machine on the first floor of the cyber labs eventually but this is the sort of place where i can come and just put stuff that i don't really need anymore into the the, the recycling mechanism for example the stone anode and uh, the stone cathode can go and, and get recycled and as you can see it's going to get shot around here and it's just going to join the, the the piping network over here where the quarry connects to the piping network and as you can see, the quarry is making good, good, uh, you know, it's making pretty good progress. It's about 10 blocks down now. 
And uh, that is looking pretty awesome. And we haven't really been overwhelmed with items, which is really sweet. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the setup. I, I really am happy with how the setup is functioning. And um, I can't wait to get it completely optimized with overclockers. So let's get back to, into the machine room, guys, and let's talk about overclockers. Now, overclockers are incredibly expensive upgrades, but, um, you know, they essentially just make your, your tools just work so much better for you at the cost of some materials. So it's definitely worth the investment, I think. Um, and let's have a look at the recipe. So first and foremost, what we see is, is a very basic recipe. All we need uh, are copper cables, electric circuits, and coolant cells. Now, electronic circuits and copper cables, we are, we've got a ton of those, man. We've made loads of them. We don't need to worry about these materials. But let's have a look at the recipe for a coolant cell. Now, a coolant cell, as you can see, requires a butt ton of tin. And um, I do believe if we just wait for it to tick over and a... And a, and a, no, one more, one more, and a bucket of water. <laughs> okay, so we're going to need a butt ton of iron and a butt ton of tin to make these coolant uh, cells. Now, I've got everything that we need for crafting today in the project table already, so we might as well just get to it. First and foremost, we need to make 30, um, well, how many buckets do we need to make? Well, we're going to make two um, overclockers per recycler, and there's five recyclers, right? So we need to make 10 um, overclocker units, and each overclocker unit is going to require three coolant cells, and each coolant cell requires one bucket. So we're going to re require 30 uh, buckets. <laughs> so, bam, there are the 30 buckets in the belly, man. That is a butt ton of buckets. Damn! Damn! Um, what else do we need for this coolant cell? We, well, we've got the tin. Here's the tin. We need 120 tin ingots. We've managed to get that from macerating tin ore via the quarry, which is awesome. And uh, we also need to make those, um, these, we need to make 10 electronic circuits, which of course isn't difficult to do at all. Why don't we just get that done and dusted out of the way? Of course, we make it with copper cable, um, a piece of refined urn in the middle and redstone on the sides. And uh, we can make our electronic circuits eight electronic circuits oh drat <laughs> we don't have enough electronic circuits we need two more electronic circuits to make 10 of our overclockers man i thought i'd organized everything but apparently not but <laughs> guys no bother um I, we need to go, now go to the town well and pillage that well of its water. As you can see, I've added a button to, to open the cyber lab so that the um, the residents of Rentown can no longer come and mess with the sensitive equipment down there. They were driving me crazy, man. I had to actually build a staircase all the way up from the maintenance level, all the way up to, to Rentown to get them out. Remember, there were two or three of, of them in the cyber labs at the time. Man, that was some annoying ass jazz. <laughs> but guys, we are here at the um, the... The, the Rentown well, and we need to fill 30 buckets of welder. So let's get busy getting filling. And um, it looks like this is not an infinite water source over here. So we're probably going to have to create our own infinite water source. Check the mayor's arrived, man. He's like, dude, what are you doing? Do you have a permit to suck up this much welder? I do not have a permit, sir. However, I am building a giant ass evil laboratory underneath your town. So my suggestion would be to just let it slide. Just back up, back up, and let it slide. Both of you, back up, man. You guys are in my personal bubble. Get out of here. Bastards. All right, anyway. <laughs> Let's continue to fill our buckets with our brand new... Oh, that wasn't an infinite water source. What the jazz? All right, let's just make sure that we make an infinite water source over here. There we go. Okay, we can now continue to fill up our buckets. 30 times, man. This is going to be ridiculous. I don't know if we're going to have enough space in our inventory, actually, to do this. Um, okay, we've got no more space in our inventory, um, but we have quite a, a, a lot of buckets. So why don't we head back into the machine room and build those um, coolants, as many coolant cells as we can get, and then we'll come back up and do the rest of the bucket work. But uh, let's get to it, man. I'm so freaking excited about these overclockers. I cannot wait to see them in action. Now, the way that we do this, guys is by adding our buckets of water into here and then adding a bucket of water in here and of course surrounding it with tin ingots and that gives us a coolant cell let's just make as many as we can oh my goodness all right so um clearly we're going to need a, <laughs> a butt ton of space for this project because these items do not stack and um let's get another bucket of water in there 
And uh, as you can see, the items are not stacking. So um, this this is going to take a butt ton of space to do, but we've got quite a lot now. So what we can do now is actually make some overclockers and that's going to free up some of our space. Looks like we're going to need some more copper cables though to get this done. So let's head back into the storage rooms. Um, I'll let you I'll have a look what I've done in this in the Squidward maintenance room. Um, two of them are disconnected. They're on holiday, um, but we still got four guys charging at full pace. And as you can see, the uh, lava reservoir tanks below are still full, which is awesome. Um, I, I honestly thought we were going to run out of lava much quicker than that, but uh, they are still going at full blast. So that is sweet. Right, let's drop off some of the stones, some of this cobblestone, and we need to pick up some rubber. And we need to pick up some copper. Oh, I moved all of the ingots into this chest, guys, to give you an idea of how much material we are getting from the quarry um, and the macerator. As you can see, we are doubling up on all of the ores that we get out of the um, out of the, the quarry. So it's really sweet, man. The macerator, what an amazing freaking tool. I love that thing. All right, anyway, enough dilly-dallying, man. Let's get this done. Let's get some more copper cables created. There we go. And all we need to do is get the copper up in there. Man, we probably don't have enough copper for this. But, yeah, 60 copper cables should definitely be more than enough. Um, so, let's have a look at the recipe. So, it's coolant, ca it's coolant cells on the top. Copper cable, electronic circuit, copper cable. Okay, so that's easy, right? Coolant cells. Copper cable. Electronic circuit. Overclocker units. Sweet. All right, so let's make as many of those as we can. We can make three. Um, let's make some mo. Play them. And looks like we can make one more. Okay, so they stack in groups of four, it seems. So we've got six. We just need to make four more of these bad boys. And uh, that is going to result in us, oh man, overclocking our recyclers, which is going to be freaking sweet. Tell you what, guys, I'm going to complam this bad boy, finish off all the overclockers. And on the other side of this complam, we will install the overclockers into the recycling unit. And then we will connect up our macerator to the quarry. I'll see you on the other side of this complam, my cyber doggy dogs. Complam! All right, Cyberdogs, we are back overclocker in hand and we are ready to install these 10 overclockers into our recyclers uh, and hopefully increase their, their um, output dramatically because as you can see, the infinite loop is now jam-packed with the quarry running at full and uh, man, this is going to be freaking epic, people. Oh my goodness. Um, I made way too many buckets, by the way, than I actually needed. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that doesn't matter. So guys, we've got our overclockers in hand over here. I've also got some ores ready for when we set up the macerator. But guys, what I want to do is install two of the overclockers into each of our, re of our recycling units. And all you got to do to do that is put the overclockers in these slots over here. As you can see, they are interchangeable. You can take them out. You can put them back in again. And let's see what kind of a difference that makes. Wow, that is actually actually going that is going much faster in fact that is going faster almost faster than the infinite loop can um, actually re refill well not really um, but that is going that is actually going much faster though so let's get the overclockers installed into all of the recyclers I have a feeling that we're going to have to install another two overclockers into each of the recyclers to get them running at optimal speed and to really get the, um, the, the items in the infinite loop used up. But I think that the, that everything must be functioning much faster now. We can see this one is draining actually really quickly. Look at that, man. Really, really quickly. Excellent. Let's have a look through this window over here if we can see a, a, a speed up of scrap production. Um, still looking fairly, oh no, it's definitely faster. It's definitely faster than it was before. I would say probably a 50% increase, I would think, something like that. So um, these auto crafting tables are now getting pieces of scrap much quicker. And uh, that means that, you know, our dispenser is going to get filled up much quicker. Now this timer, while awesome, does make quite a lot of noise. So <laughs> I think what I want to do for now is just disable it while we work uh, down in the cyber labs. That ticking noise has been sort of grating into my brain <laughs> for the last 10 minutes or so while I was building um, the overclockers. So I'm just going to unplug it for now. We'll plug it back in um, at the end of the episode. But guys, what we want to do now is start working on getting ores that come out of the quarry directly into the macerator so that, so that the macerator can automatically turn them into dust, thus doubling our yield of ores from the quarry. So... Um, it's going to work very simply, right? What we're going to have is a diamond pipe over here. That diamond transport pipe is going to send ores up this shaft, 
which is going to go all the way along the roof of the cyber labs into the top of that hopper over there so it's just a matter of installing a couple of pipes and then um getting the, the you know the diamond transport pipe configured correctly and that is that is all we're going to have to do to automate our quarry which i think is pretty damn sweet um, so let's get the diamond pipe installed and what we're going to do now is run a golden transport pipe all the way up to the top of our quarry and uh, that is going to automate this whole system which is going to be absolutely epic so what we're going to do is get a, a diamond transport pipe installed over here and it uh, looks like we, uh oh okay so we're going to have to configure the the um we're going to have to configure this diamond pipe before we actually do anything. So I think what we probably need to do is turn off the quarry, which looks like it might have just run out of power. Let's have a look. Um, this MFE, yep, the MFE has run dry of power. So let's quickly get back up to our power plant. Turn on those Squidwards, man. These Squidwards need to get to work. They have had a long freaking holiday in the pineapple under the sea. And it is time to get busy getting busy. Come on, Squidwards. Suck up some juice and uh, get our quarry firing again, man. We need to see that bad boy working. And uh, what we'll do is just jump down the shaft over here to get back to um, the place that we're working, which is this ma automatic macerator shaft over here. So um, I didn't. S Let's just have a quick look what color the pipe's going to be. So the pipe's going to be blue. So let's get. Uh oh. Let's get the blue part of the diamond pipe configured with all of our ores. We've got gold. We've got lead. We've got silver. We've got bauxite. Uh, monoz monozit, iron, tin, and copper. I think we're missing one more. It's called feral, feral or ferron or something like that. But unfortunately, we don't have any of it in the cyber labs at the moment. Um, as soon as we get a little bit more, I'll come and add it to this diamond pipe. So now all the ores from those particular um, that we've specified in the blue pipe are going to come up here, right? And now what we're going to do is run them along here um, into the top of the hopper so we've had to excavate a little bit over here um, to get this done but that is okay we'll just fix everything up oops oh goodness my bad um <laughs> we'll fix everything up once we've got everything installed but unfortunately i just noobed out and fell um standing on pipes is 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 not a good idea man they the, the pathing and stuff is kind of weird with these pipes um there we go all right, let's get rid of this little dirt. Okay, so there is the hopper down there, right? So what we got to do is get this diamond pipe hooked up into um, the transport network, just like that. And uh, let's just help ourselves out of here. Probably this way. Oh goodness, this is looking awful. Excavation works, everybody. Do not worry. Everything will be cleaned up eventually once all the wiring and stuff is done. So don't stretch yourselves. Don't stretch yourselves, everybody. Right, well, let's just let's temporarily fill the gaps with some stone. <laughs> oh god, that looks awful. I'm gonna have to come and fix and fix that. <laughs> okay, so um, this should mean now that any ore that the quarry sucks up is gonna go straight into the macerator. So let's get the quarry turned on again. The MFE should uh, be getting a whole bunch of juice now from our squidwoods looking good man these squidwoods are hungry for lava man damn they are sucking up their lava like nobody's business now what we should see guys is ores going this way into the macerator um cobblestone going into the auto crafting table and everything else going into the warehouse so you know this is looking really really good now our um our quarry system is actually almost completely done there we go there you saw some ore go up the pipe up the shaft into um into the, the the macerator above in the machine room so that's working beautifully absolutely 100 percent stoked with that man that is absolutely awesome and uh we can see our, our overclocked recyclers are now working away um doing the best that they can to process that material as fast as possible what i'll do next guys um off camera is get some more overclockers into our recyclers in the next episode our recyclers will be firing at full freaking blast man let's reinstall our timer and uh, that is going to show us um the dispenser making some oh it made some bread sweet um automatically dispensing for us that is absolutely excellent oh man i am so freaking happy right now i'm such a happy doggy oh, this is so cool um excellent okay oh and look what we can do guys with all of this ore over here we can use my new manual insertion machine to get these into the um into 
into the uh, <laughs> into the macerator because they're going to go around now. They're going to hit the transport pipe, uh, the diamond transport pipe over here, and go straight into the macerator. So we don't even have to worry about that, man. There we go. Nice, awesome, um, man. That is that is freaking sweet. I'm so happy with that. Nice. This is working absolutely be beautifully now. Um, excellent, man. I think it's time for a high five. Whoosh! Man, that is all so awesome. Now, guys, there is one more item of business that I want to attend to before I end this video. And uh, one of you guys somehow in the previous episode spotted a diamond um, when, when at the start of the last episode when I was uh, mining some diamonds that I had found beneath, um, well, yeah, you know, just behind the lava reservoir. And I couldn't believe that you actually spotted those diamonds because it's literally behind a pillar of lava. And what I wanted to do was head back down um, to that spot and actually collect those diamonds because we need more glass fiber cables and the more diamonds we can get the better man and <laughs> when when you got when you spotted that man whoever you are I can't remember your username but damn dude I was so impressed I was like man this dude has eyes of an eagle um, oh my god look at this the reservoir is dry people the reservoir is dry well, there's another oh my goodness this is a massive reservoir over there okay so what i'm gonna have to do is move uh is insert another lava uh shaft over here somewhere so we can suck up that reservoir but this is bad news man the reservoir is completely dry my friends that is not good times we are running out of power we've uh, i mean our, our our tanks are full of lava but they won't be full forever um so that is that that's not good man we're gonna have to figure out a plan how to deal with that and uh man i've got some i got a sweet plan man I've got a plan that involves the nether <laughs> that is right but guys right over there you see can you see a diamond there behind that this lava pillar over here well one of you cyber dogs spotted that and uh man i cannot thank you enough for your astute eyes man this is freaking awesome hopefully it is more than just one hopefully it's a nice um cache of diamonds that we've got going over here um of course we need to find a way to protect them from this giant pillar of lava um which will no doubt very be very happy to dissolve the diamonds um, and destroy them for us so <laughs> i think what we're going to do is just kind of collect a little bit more cobblestone and make sure that we build some sort of like a, a a protection wall i guess around these diamonds so that we can harvest them uh without burning alive there we go oh god hmm this is precarious <laughs> right okay so it looks like it's just one diamond well it, okay so it's just one diamond but you know what it's it's one diamond we didn't have yesterday and uh so you know i'm gonna take it i'm not gonna complain get in my belly thank you very much diamond thank you very much cyber dog who spotted that diamond man you're a freaking legend i have no idea how you spotted that let's just make sure there's no more diamonds up in this jazz and uh, man, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. I really hope you have enjoyed this pimping of the recycling facility episode. We've got overclockers installed. We've got an automatic dispenser unit installed. And our recycling unit is now making full freaking use of our quarry. And we are turning that useless material inside of our quarry into something that we can use. And uh, oh my god, <laughs> a creeper just, just spawned behind us. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to sign off before I get my ass killed. If you enjoyed the video, man, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm freaking angry. Hit that subscribe button, your butthole. Guys, we'll see you in the next Feed the Beast episode. Goodbye, my friends.